Hi, and welcome to this special broadcast directly from our studios at Cornerstone Baptist Church in Oviedo, Florida. My name is Edgar Nazario, and today I have a special treat for all the ladies who are listening. But before that, we want to invite you to our 2016 Women's Conference under the title Seeking the Glory of God with guest speakers Susan J. Heck and Martha Peace. Now stay tuned because at the end of the broadcast, we will let you know how to register for this conference. Uh, All the ladies who attend will definitely enjoy a time of fellowship, joyful worship, and biblical teaching. And speaking of biblical teaching, this year we have the blessing to have two very special women who are very well known for their biblical teaching and also their love for God's Word. And I'm speaking of uh, Miss Susan J. Heck and Martha Peace. Now today I have the opportunity uh, with us live on the phone to join us on conversation on the subjects and the sessions of our conference, Miss Susan J. Heck. Thanks, Susan, for joining us. I'm doing great. It's a rainy day in Oklahoma. For those who don't know Susan, allow me to give you a little bit of background. Susan Heck has been happily married to her husband, Doug, for 40 years. She has been involved in women's ministry for about 37 years in a variety of different ways, such as Bible studies, counseling, and she's a guest speaker at many international women's conferences. Susan is also the author of several published books, such as A Call to Discipleship, Putting Off Life-Dominating Sin, and With the Master Bible Study, among others. She's an encouragement to many Christian women by memorizing 23 books of the New Testament word for word. Susan is a mother of two and a grandmother to seven precious grandchildren. Susan, thank you for joining us on this broadcast. Uh, We're very excited and thankful to have you join us once again for our women's uh, conference. Now, Susan, what I'd like to do is to talk about the conference session so that the ladies uh, listening can get uh, more in-depth of what they should be expecting. Uh, I have here in front of me the conference itinerary, so let's go ahead and jump in with the first uh, session. But before we do that, I wanted to ask you, how did you come up with the titles for your sessions uh, did you and Martha have a theme in mind for this year's conference? Well, it'll be interesting. Martha's been a friend of mine for a long time, so I think the sisters there at Cornerstone just thought it would be a good uh, time to have us do something together, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. You know, the Sermon on the Mount is, as uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones says, it's the most understood sermon but the least obeyed. I'm just going to take three important uh, topics from chapter 6 of the Sermon on the Mount that I think are imperative if we're going to be a woman after God's own heart. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. It'll be great. It's going to be a great time together. I can't wait. What are the titles of your three sessions for this year's conference? Uh, What will you be teaching the ladies? Well, um, the first one is going to be contrasting hypocrisy and holiness. And, you know, Jesus says we shouldn't do our acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. And I think women fall in that pitfall of doing things to please others and uh, doing things to be seen of others. And Jesus is going to mention three acts of righteousness, our praying, our fasting, and our giving. But, you know, Edgar, um, anything we do, since we do everything to the glory of God, it should be an act of righteousness. And so even cooking our husband's favorite meal could can be considered an act of righteousness, but if I do it with a wrong attitude, then that act of righteousness becomes an act of unrighteousness. So um, I'm going to really zero in on that first. And uh, then secondly, I want to talk about uh, laying up treasure in in, uh in heaven and not on earth. I I think a lot of women, you know, I just got done with some spring cleaning here in my house and you wonder where do you, where do we get all this stuff and why do we have all this stuff that that moth and rust is going to corrupt and and thieves break through and steal it and I think women spend a lot of idle time um browsing recipes and clothes and all this stuff when they could be uh, doing something in their home or, you know, sharing the gospel or something like that. We need to really get back to why are we here? And uh, certainly we need to fulfill our responsibilities as moms and wives, but our treasure should be laid up in heaven, not not here on earth. And so we're going to look at that passage. And then lastly, uh, I think another pitfall of women is worry. I, I think I counsel more women who struggle with anxiety. And, uh, you know, if we believe in the sovereignty of God, 
there should be no need for worry. And so Jesus has that passage, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. He says the pagans do this. Pagans are characterized by worry, but God's children should not be characterized by worry. So we're going we're gonna to look at that as well and needful uh, worship and needless worry, and hopefully um, the women will learn to put that sinful sin off in um and get back to worshiping the Lord instead of worrying about their life. So that's kind of where I'm going. I'm looking forward to it. Susan, being that you travel quite a bit and have the blessing of meeting women in many parts of the world, uh, as a pastor's wife and a Bible teacher to women, what are some of the common pitfalls that you see Christian women are dealing with that shows they need to address the contrast between hypocrisy and holiness? Well, I think uh, one of the pitfalls would be uh, gossip, you know, that shouldn't characterize the life of of a a woman after God's own heart, Um, you know, or to speak things that are edifying. Um, Another one I see is just a lack of the the disciplines of the means of grace. And what I mean by that is being involved in the local church, accountability, uh, prayer, Bible reading. I have to tell you, I'm just shocked at the amount of women that, that don't read their Bible, don't know their Bible, and, uh, you know, my Bible says that that the godly woman delights in the law of the Lord, and yet I just see the women today delighting in so much of the world, and I would say that is uh, definitely, you know, to profess the name of Christ and then not delight in his ways and in his word is, is to me, very concerning as an older woman watching just the trend in the church today. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of hypocrisy in the church. There might be women right now, Susan, who might be dealing and battling with the sin of hypocrisy right now. If any of these women had the opportunity to, to sit down with you for a private counseling session and they asked you, what biblical and practical advice uh, would you give me so that the Lord would help me overcome the sin of hypocrisy, uh, what would you say to them? Well, I really believe, Edgar, that the best way is to honestly sit before the Lord and ask yourself that hard question, Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I serving in the church? Why am I reading my Bible? Why am I praying? Is it for, so I can tell somebody about it? Is it so, because somebody's watching? Or is it truly because of my love for God and my desire to glorify Him? And I have to do that from time to day. Like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why do I do what I do? Um, You know, is it for self-glory? Is it for God's glory? Is it because I love Him? Is it because I love myself? Do I want the praise of men or the praise of God? And so, but, you know, we don't sit long enough to sit before the Lord and ask those hard questions. And, uh, you know, I think we're... Uh, such a fast-paced society with so much technical uh, social networking, and we just don't take time to be holy and just sit before the Lord and really evaluate our heart as much as we can. I know the heart's deceitful, but at the same time, um, I think it'd be wise for us to really ask ourselves some hard questions. Why am I doing what I'm doing? And um, and be be real with the Lord. Don't don't have fake answers. <laughs> so. That would be my two cents. Once again, Susan, thank you so much for taking time uh, to talk to our listeners and uh, continue our conversation about our 2016 Women's Conference. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Susan, for sharing with all the women listeners a little bit of the great teaching that is to come. And for all the women who are out there who are listening, let me encourage you to register today and don't risk being left out since we do have a limited amount of seating. Once again, come and join us in our 2016 Women's Conference under the title Seeking the Glory of God with guest speakers Susan J. Hack and Martha Peace. This Women's Conference will be hosted at Cornerstone Baptist Church this coming 15th. 15th and 16th of July. All of our ladies will enjoy a time of fellowship, joyful worship, and biblical teaching. So take advantage and register today online by visiting www.seekinghisglory.net. I'll repeat that again, www.seekinghisglory.net. Or if you have questions, feel free to give us a call here at our studios at 407-971-7685. 407-971-7685. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to seeing you at our 2016 Women's Conference. God bless you.